We've, uh, we've talked to a lot of uh, parents and kids uh, at the hospitals over the year. Uh, we've, we've told some stories yesterday and last night, and, uh, and we'll continue to tell some more stories, hoping that it'll touch your heart. Uh, one story is about our, our, our good friend Luca. Now, Sophie and Paolo, his, uh, his mom and dad, uh, they didn't really find anything unusual about his, de his demeanor at first. Uh, he was always smiling. He was, he was a kid who was always excited and, and happy, and he, he seemed like just any other boy, but it wasn't the case. We had the first idea at nine months when we saw that uh, he wasn't standing up, he wasn't uh, sitting up, actually. And at that point, we started uh, our researches. But uh, beforehand, there was no sign that he was different from any other child. He was always happy and smiling and whenever people would come to him. And that's something that is typical of Angelman. He, he was starting to walk, and then we would find him on the floor crying and say, what happened? How did he fall? You know, it was like, it, it didn't make any sense. We were just uh, thinking that he would be walking late. Uh, they took an EEG and it wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly normal. We had no idea of uh, another kind of uh, syndrome. Overall, uh, his development was late. So we were just, uh, you know, there was still a hope that Okay, he'd be late in his development, but yet uh, maybe he could still go to school, but late or, you know, uh, that he would develop into a normal kid with uh, a little bit of uh, deficiency, uh, uh, maybe a slight uh, mental retardation. Uh, we didn't really know. He wasn't developing as fast as we, were, we, we wanted him to. And, uh, well, Sophie started doing uh, a lot more research into syndromes and... Uh, she came upon Angelman. It's a genetic syndrome which uh, primarily affects the uh, 15 chromosome. Uh, it's got uh, as symptoms, atotonia, sleep disorder, uh, epilepsy. Uh, they walk at a very late age. They'll never speak. In Luca's case, we're lucky because he understands quite a bit. So uh, it makes it easier for us to, uh, to communicate with him. We also do a, uh, a physiotherapy uh, uh, that's called Padova, which is very helpful. It helped him in his motor skills uh, a great deal, a great deal. A lot of things he can do uh, now that he was not be able to do before. It's a genetic condition, so you cannot change it, you cannot cure it, but you can help him uh, with physiotherapy. <laughs> We just rebuilt the whole system so that it can do it by itself, what, what a, norm, um, a regular standard developing nervous system would do. Um, so we're just giving the right impulse so that the nervous system just kicks in and just does what it has to be do, what it has to do. We created our, uh, our own foundation for Angelman uh, Syndrome here in Quebec. By creating this foundation and trying to help other parents who don't not necessarily have the money or the know-how, just somewhere to just turn around to, someone to talk to, uh, someone who understands, and at the same time, we can share. We learn from them as much as they learn from us. Luca, I can say that he turned us into better people. Thank you so much for joining us, Paolo and, uh, and Sophie. We really appreciate you being here. Pleasure. I can't help but notice that last line. You said that he turned us into better people. Oh, definitely. Tell definitely. us how. Well, you know, when you're not aware of uh, what's going on in other people's lives, when people have children with disabilities, uh, you can't understand what they're going through. So with, uh, with Luca, he had to, uh, we had to look deep inside us, uh, ourselves and, uh, you know, and uh, go get the best out of us and uh, get the courage to, uh, to keep on fighting. Because a lot of uh, 
a lot of families that have uh, disabled children, I think it's about 80% break up. You know, it's, uh, it's tough on the family, it's tough on the couple, uh, it's tough on a lot of people. We had a lot of good support. And it was really tough, especially in the beginning, Sophie, because you didn't even know what Luca had. Uh, you did a lot of research on your own. Yes, indeed, and that was the worst part because uh, when you're in the dark like that, you don't know what your child has. You don't have a clear diagnosis. You it's don't even know what you're fighting. No, exactly. You don't know what the future holds for you. So it's really, uh, it's really something else. Yeah. How did you know, Sophie? Like what? That that something was maybe wrong. Well, uh, starting with the seizures mm -hmm. and uh, the hypotonia. Well, we we saw at nine months that. It was different, there was something wrong, but we didn't know up to what point. So doing uh, researches, uh, slowly by slowly, we found out about the Angelman. There's very little known about Angelman disease, um, but other families, you're now reaching out to other families. Tell us who you brought with us, uh, who you brought with you today. This is Christine and Jason and Emma. The beautiful <laughs> Emma. The family Alain that we met uh, here in Montreal. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did, how did you meet uh, our family here? <laughs> They're having fun on TV. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, me and Sophie met um, with the ASS, uh, the ASF, it's the uh, American Syndrome, Angelman Syndrome Foundation. And actually, it's um, a New York family that got us together. Got us together mm -hmm. And so we just started an, a relationship, and it's amazing. We feel s so much supported, and we don't feel alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And to, to meet other people just like us mm -hmm. that are affected and that mm -hmm. have been through. And the weird thing is, me and Sophie, when we found that when we found out about our, our children we were pregnant yeah. for her our, okay. well, my third girl and, and oh, Sophie second her child. second child and so t to feel alone and t to not know what to expect uh, it was nice to have someone to talk to after that she really went through the same thing I did you know what, what were some of the signs what were some of the symptoms that you were seeing early on well you know she, she Emma was a, a you know the typical perfect baby I could put her in her chair and she was happy all the time, you know. <laughs> she could be in the chair for an hour, and I'd feel guilty, you know, because I didn't have to entertain her to be happy. To, 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 to it, you know, she was always, always laughing, always in the mood. And at about a year old, um, I have an older daughter. We watched my oldest, uh, um, her home video of her first birthday, and that's when me and Jason said no. There's something there. You know? We always thought she was, you know, not progressing as as well as the others. But then we said, oh, we need to consult. We need to see. There's something wrong. She's you know? got a birthday coming up. Yes. Third birthday. Yes, third coming birthday. Up. Tell me quickly. You set up a foundation. Yeah, blue bands. Blue bands. Very nice. Yeah, we it's, the, uh, <laughs> it's the Angel Wing Syndrome Foundation. We started uh, this summer. It's going very well. We already have 15 uh, people on the, the board of directors. Uh, there's so many good people out there. Yeah. And, and you know. Absolutely. And Paolo, <laughs> absolutely. All, all you, you want is, is some support. Some support for, from absolutely. people that are out there that are listening right now. What do you have to tell viewers? <laughs> Every little cent helps. Uh, if there was more uh, research and we would know more, would be a lot faster for all of us. It would be better for society, less costly for society. If our children could walk faster, and it w there wouldn't be two to three years worth of delays and get the, the help they need right away, children that are not walking today could have walked, but unfortunately, the critical years, one to six, three of those years are spent waiting. And that is, it, it, you, have to, you have to be in it to understand it. And we, this don't, we don't want other families to be waiting. We don't want other children to be exactly. waiting. We want to find cures, and that's why it is so important to get those, that money in, to get the research going. The number to call is 954-9898. We want to thank all of you for being thank with us for today and for thank sharing you your story. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us.